Alright, in this video we're going to be looking at the uh, multiplication rule and we'll start with the basics of the multiplication rule. And uh, what we'll do is begin with some notation that deals with the notation with the uh, multiplication rule. Now with the addition rule we have the probability of event A or event B occurring. In this case with the multiplication rule, we can have the word and in it. So it's the probability of event A and B. And what that means is this. That it's the probability that A occurs in the first trial. And B occurs in the second trial. Okay, so in the multiplication rule, we're going to be using the word and in this particular situation. Because event A has to occur first, and then B occurs in the second trial. So both A and B are occurring. Now, another notation would be this. You have the probability of B, then you have the uh, bar next to it, and then A. <coughs> Now this notation means this. That's the probability of B occurring after A has already occurred. Okay, now Another way that we can interpret that would be this, the probability of event B given A. That means that the probability of event B occurring given the fact that A has already occurred. Okay. Now, our formal multiplication rule is going to be this. So here we're going to have the probability of A and B. That's going to be equal to the probability of event A multiplied by the probability of event B given that A has already occurred. Okay, So that's the formal multiplication rule. So we're going to be multiplying whatever that probability for event A and then it will be multiplied by the probability that B has occurred given that A has already happened. Okay. All right. So here when we apply the multiplication rule, we need to focus on whether A and B, events A and B, are independent. Okay, so here's another definition of that we need to be familiar with, and that's independent. Okay, so in this case here, this is where events A and B, they are independent. If the occurrence of one does not affect the probability of the occurrence <coughs> of the other. So the, the occurrence of event A does not affect the probability of the, of the occurrence of the other, then we can say that events A and B are independent. Okay? If they're not independent, then obviously then we can say that they are dependent, and that means that event A depends upon the other. Okay? 
And also, we can use sampling methods, which are important in statistics and the following relationships hold. So there are two things that we're going to be looking at in these examples. One of them is sampling with replacement. <clears throat> and with sampling with replacement, that means that the selections are independent events. Now, what do I mean by sampling with replacement? Okay, let's say I had two red balls, four green balls, and uh, I'll say five yellow balls. Okay. And I want to select two balls out of the hat, out of the bag. On the first selection, the probability of selecting a green ball would be, in this case, 4 out of 11. Now that's on the first pick. Now on the second pick, I put the green ball back in, so that means I still have 11 balls in the bag that I'm choosing. Now the probability of selecting the green ball in this case will still be 4 out of 11. So here those selections are independent events because what I'm doing here is this. With replacement, I'm pulling a green ball on the first draw and then I'm going to put it back in the bag. And then on the second draw, I'm going to try to pull out another green ball. So it'll still be 4 out of 11. So that's what we mean by sampling with replacement. Okay, now the second is sampling without replacement. Now, for sampling without replacement, that means my selections are going to be dependent events. Okay, now let's use those two red balls, four green balls, and five yellow balls, for example. And I'm still going to select two balls out of the bag. On the first pick, I want to select the green ball. So here the probability that I select the green ball on the first draw would still be 4 out of 11. But now, on the second draw, that first green ball that I pulled out won't go back in the bag. So now, when I want the probability of selecting the green ball, this time, instead of 11 balls in the bag, I'm going to be down to 10. Now, the green ball that I picked on the first draw won't go back in, so that means instead of four green balls, I'm going to be down to three. Okay? Now, you can look at this as, and think with replacement, your numerator and your denominator will decrease by one for each, successful, each successive uh, pull out of the hat. Okay? So that's what we mean by sampling without replacement. Okay, because these are dependent events. So the first, whatever happens here will depend upon, well, this depends upon the first draw. Okay. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples that deal with sampling with replacement and sampling without replacement. Okay, here's the first example. Here you want to refer to the table below, given that two 
of the 112 subjects are randomly selected. Complete parts A and B. Alright, so here we got type, blood types, which is R plus and R, RH plus and RH minus, and the group of 0, A, I mean O, A, B, and AB. In part A, you want to assume that the selections are made with replacement. What is the probability that the two selected subjects are both group O and type RH? Okay, so now let's look at this particular situation here. Okay, the first person that you're going to select is going to be the probability that you have that they're both group O and type RH plus. Okay, so in this case here, Group O is this column, RH plus is this row here. That number in that intersection would be simply 35, and that's out of the total of 112. <clears throat> so for the first person, the probability of selecting an individual with type O and RH plus would be 35 over 112, or group O and type RH plus. Now for the second person, now this is with, with replacement, which means that person, that first person will be still in consideration, so the probability will still remain the same. Okay, so here, the probability of type group O and type RH plus would still be 35 over 112. Okay, with replacement means that that person will be going back into the into the uh, group for consideration, so that probability stays the same. Okay, now we're gonna multiply these two together because we want the probability that two subjects are of group zero, group O and type RH plus. So we just simply multiply these two together. We multiply 35 over 112 by 35 over 112. And we're going to round our decimal value to four decimal places. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how to enter that into the calculator. So here, I'm going to use left parentheses here, 35 divided by 112 close parentheses, times, open parentheses, 35 divided by 112, close parentheses, and then hit enter. And let's say to four decimal places, that would be 0.0977. Okay. So the probability <clears throat> that two selected Subjects of both group O and type RH plus will be 0 0.0977. Okay, so that's part A, which is with replacement. Now, part B, you want to assume that the selections are made without replacement, and you want to find the probability that the two that the two selected subjects are both group O and type RH plus. Okay, so now in this case, now for the first person, the probability of selecting the first person, that is of both group O and type R H plus, that's 35 over 112. Okay, now that person will not be considered again. So we're not going to put him back into the uh, pot for selection. So for the second person that we select that has type O or group O and type RH plus, the numerator and the denominator will decrease by 1. So instead of 35, I'm going to have 34. And instead of 112 subjects, I'm going to have 111 subjects. 
And that's the example of without replacement. Here, the sample size decreased by 1 on the second selection and the number in question that you're dealing with. We started off with 35. It's going to decrease by 1 as well. Okay. So now, the probability of selecting two people that are of group O and type RH+, plus, we're going to multiply 35 over 112 times 34 over 111. Okay, using my calculator here. This will be 35 divided by 112. Notice I'm putting the 35 over 112 in parentheses times left parentheses, this time 34 divided by 111, close parentheses. And if you hit enter, you'll get 0 0.0957. Round it to four decimal places. So 0 0.0957 represents the probability of selecting two subjects that are both group O and type RH+, and the, those selections are made without replacement. Okay. All right, now here's another example. Here the, company, the accompanying table contains the results from experiments with a polygraph instrument. Find the probabilities of the event in parts A and B. Are these events unlikely? And here, in part A, you have four subjects. Four of the test subjects are randomly selected with replacement. And they all had true negative test results. Okay, so with replacement means that the probabilities for each individual test subject will remain the same. Okay, so... The probability that we have four true negative test results. Okay. Now, for a negative test result, in this case here, a true negative test result, that means that the person did not lie and the test came back negative. So that's a true negative test result right here. That number is 17 out of the grand total of, now we can get those totals here. So here, this will be 26, that's 40. Add 26 and 44, you're going to get 66. Now if you add across, you get 45 and 21, that's also 66. So the grand total here is 66. Now this is going to be with replacement, so for the second person that you'll select, it'll still be 17 over 66. The third person that you select will still be 17 over 66. And the fourth person that you select will still be 17 over 66. So this is an example of with replacement, meaning that person is going back in for selection. So the probability remains the same for four, for each of the four test uh, subjects that are randomly selected. Okay. Now, that 17 over 66 is used as a factor of four times. So on the, on the calculator, this is what I'm going to do. 17 divided by 66 in parentheses. Now I'm going to close it. But it's used as a factor of four times. So I'm going to use the caret key for the exponent and then 4. Instead of typing 1766 times 1766 times 1766 times 1766, it'll be easier to type it in this way and then come up with my answer of 0 0.004. So the probability of selecting four test subjects where they all had true negative test results will be 0 0.004. And those and they're randomly selected with that with replacement. 
So this represents with replacement. Okay, now part B is for the test subjects are randomly selected without replacement and they all had four true negative test results. So in this case, the probability of four true negative test results with replacement, the first one you select will be 17 over 66. Now, with, without replacement means this numerator and the denominator will decrease by 1. So the second person that you select would be 16 out of 65. Now, for the third person you select, the numerator and the denominator decreases by 1, so it will be 15 over 64. Now, for the fourth person that you select, now, here, this denominator and numerator decrease by 1, so it will be 14 over 63. Okay. Now, this, you have to type all of this into the calculator. So, in this case here, the first one is 17 over 66. I'm putting these in parentheses times, left parentheses, 16 divided by 65, close parentheses, times left parentheses 15 over 64 close parentheses times open parentheses 14 over 63 close parentheses and then hit enter in this case it'll be 0 0.003 so the probability of selecting four subjects randomly with replacement where they all had four negative test results for true negative test results would be 0 0.003. Okay. Now, on the homework due, we pay close attention to how many decimal places they want you to round to. Some problems ask you to round to four decimal places. Others may ask you to round to three decimal places. So do pay close attention to how many decimal places you are asked to round off to. Okay. So that will conclude this particular video on some of the basics in the multiplication rule.